On the one end of the reproductive strategy distribution are people who commit to the long run. And on the other end are the people who pursue short-term, hedonistic, one-night stand relationships. Okay, now you can ask, who are these people? Well, the people who commit to the short-term, responsibility-less, sexual gratification relationship are psychopathic, narcissistic, Machiavellian, and sadistic. And if they don't start out that way, they train themselves to become that with that lifestyle. You might ask, well, who the hell cares? If I can gratify myself at your expense, why the hell shouldn't I? Who's to say that's wrong? And my answer to that would be, you will degenerate because you're exploiting other people and yourself. And you can't exploit other people and yourself without degenerating. You will never form a relationship because who the hell's gonna hang around with you? If it's all about you and all about you in the moment, you're the last person anyone wants to be around. So that means that as you age, you'll become increasingly isolated. There's nothing more despicable than a 50-year-old hedonist, oldest guy at the frat party. Maybe if you're 30 at a frat party, even then, like the eyebrows are up. If you're 40, not only are your eyebrows up, you're kind of a creep. Those lifestyles, they don't work. They don't work for the person because they're not sustainable, not within the context of the relationships that would make for a community and they don't work communally obviously because community is based on sacrifice civilized societies are monogamous what happens if you dispense with monogamy well we already know here's what's happening on the college campuses so imagine now you have a college campus that's 65 percent female and 35 percent male so you think well that's pretty good for the men because they're making out like bandits it's like no a tiny fraction of the men are making out like bandits 10 percent of them let's say it's probably more like five percent high status status, high-value males. And they sort of have the pick of the women. And the women are all after those guys. They don't care about the other guys. They're after those guys. And those guys have like 10 women. So what are they learning? Well, they're learning how to exploit 10 women. So they're just turning into exploiters. What happens with the women? Well, they don't have a relationship. They're all chasing the same high-status guy. And he has options. He doesn't have to make any sacrifices to formulate a long-term relationship. So the women who, any of the decent women are, they're just what the hell's left for them? They can sell themselves out to be an easy lay for the high status guy, but that women pay a massive price for that. Women pay way more a price for sexual immorality than men do because the cost for them is obviously much greater. The risk is much higher. The shame is greater in consequence. You know, I don't think it's any better for a man to do that than for a woman. That's not my point. But a promiscuous woman is selling herself out immediately and in the long run in a way that's more profound than a promiscuous man. They're equally morally reprehensible in some ways. The right deal is to be attractive to women, radically attractive to women. Radically attractive enough to women so that you have your pick of women, and then to find one woman. And society falls apart if that doesn't happen. That's a sacrifice, obviously. I think that everybody has the temptation. If you don't have the temptation, then you're lying or you're weak. It's in all beings that the male wants to plant his seed in as many females as possible. The female romantic fantasy, the female myth, is Beauty and the Beast. Tameable Beast. In the Disney movie Beauty and the Beast, the woman, who's quite a stellar character, right? She's beautiful and she's wise and she's intelligent. She has her choice. She's got Loser, the village men. She's got Narcissist, that's Gaston. And she's got Beast. Now, stupid women like narcissists. Naive women like narcissists because they confuse their narcissism with competence. And confidence. That's how narcissists exploit. They look like they're competent. Gaston is after her, wants to charm her. She goes for the beast. Well, the beast is a monster. He's a traumatized monster even. But she hopes that he's tameable, that she can bring him into relationship. And good beast has options, but he'll forgo the options for the relationship. That's the female sexual fantasy. Tameable beast. Now, that's rough, right? Because how likely is it that you're going to be able to tame a beast? Not that likely, but pretty damn useful if you can do it. Then you have someone who can keep the real beasts at bay. Women have to negotiate a very tight line because they're looking for men who are disagreeable enough to be able to tell the monsters to go to hell, but who are generous and productive enough to share. That's a hard target to hit. It's a hard target for a man to become too. Find something difficult to do. You need that. You're not built for comfort or pleasure. Like if that comes along, good. If you have a day where you're comfortable and there's some things around you that give pleasure, have some sense and enjoy it. But don't be thinking that's what your life is aimed at. That's contemptible. Everyone knows that. And if they orient themselves in that hedonistic direction, there's nothing in it but shame. I can live whatever lifestyle I want. It's like, well, first of all, no, you can't. That doesn't work. It won't work for you, because you can't sell yourself out, and it won't work for other people. It's better to have success in the temptations, but it's actually better to have the success and then not fall prey to the temptations. And that's a real mastery, high order mastery, that's truly admirable.